with David Ignatius of the Washington Post that you want to move quickly and, um, and have pointed out that Iran's nuclear program has been widely seen and perceived as a threat, in particular by Israel and in particular as a ripe trigger for potential nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. Now, President Obama in his speech cited two things that he felt were particularly of note in moving ahead. One was the Supreme Leader's issuing of a fatwa against the development of nuclear weapons, and your statement that Iran will never develop a nuclear weapon. But also it's been clear that the next step is concrete action. Now, we've seen that the end game for the U.S., the outlines will certainly involve some agreement to um, commit to the peaceful development only with transparent and verifiable um, and open inspections, greater inspection access, also a limiting of the nuclear facilities, a limiting of the stockpiles of enriched material, and a cap on enrichment somewhere below the 5% Threshold. So we know the outlines of, of some of the end game there. But what does your end game look like? What are you looking for in these three months to six months that you cited? And um, do you think you, we can get there? Well, the depth and detail of the question that has arisen, I can say in response, I have. Are, are of such nature that would have to be addressed mainly at the P5 plus 1. But in principle, what I'd like to say is that the people of Iran, like all other nations, have decided to take advantage of one of their rights, to use one of their rights. In other words, of course, any country can use one of its rights and choose not to at the same time. But the Iranian people have chosen to use that right of attaining nuclear technology to um, use it for their benefit. And in fact, under very difficult circumstances, their own nuclear scientists, who are very young ones, have been able to attain that for the country. So under these circumstances, it is natural that the people of Iran want to ensure that their rights are realized, just as any other nation would. Right now in the world, more than 40 countries have embarked on enrichment programs, some within the framework of the Safeguards Agreement, and even some some outside the safeguards agreement framework, but for the Islamic Republic of Iran, all its activities have been within the safeguards agreement and have continually and will continue to remain under the supervision of the IAEA. Now, this is one side of the story, to ensure that Iran's right remains intact. The second issue is that should there be concerns, if they are rational rather than propagandas and irrational ones, that those rational concerns must be uh, addressed and settled in, in, in fact, achieving our rights and goals, we do not wish to ignore the interests of any other country. We do not seek to go into war with any country. We do not seek to produce any weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. And therefore, should there be any concerns, it is crucial to us to remove those concerns. Um, we would like to do that just this afternoon. Uh, since 4 um, p.m. until maybe right now or maybe a little, it may have ended. The P5 plus 1 uh, was happening at the level of uh, foreign ministers, and Ms. Ashton uh, was there. And we uh, hope that this positive step that has been taken as a first solid and strong step will help us continue talks and that within a short time frame now, the uh, gentleman who questioned me said three months or six months, or I said that the sooner the better, I'd say. The sooner the better if we can settle this issue because we think that the speedy settlement of this issue will benefit both sides, both Iran and the other negotiating partners. Well, thank you, Mr. President.